I was just talking about this massive sell-off that we are seeing in oil today falling all the way to a penny a barrel. I mean, this is something that most people on the street didn't even think was possible. And as we see it flirt with the negative territory, I want to bring in Tom Close, a head of energy analysis at Opus Global. And Tom, when we take a look at this massive move to the downside that we are seeing in oil so far today, I mean, what, what do you make of this and what does this mean for the broader market? Well, a couple of things. Number one, uh, this is not based on necessarily fundamentals. This is based on the opposite of a short squeeze, where there was a tremendous amount of people who still own paper WTI. Uh, you might say, why take it these days? And uh, they had to get out. And when there's the smell of distress in the nostrils of some of the, the sellers, uh, they took advantage of it. So uh, I've never seen a penny per barrel for crude oil. We saw that earlier today. I would tell you that in your audience, you have seen the lowest prices you are likely to see in your lifetime, whether or not you're a centenarian or not. And it's probably more realistic to look at the prices for Brent, which are down today, but they're about in the mid 20s. And uh, I would not infer from this that uh, you're going to necessarily see gasoline or diesel or jet fuel prices die by a similar amount. These, these are desperately trapped longs who uh, could not get out of those positions today. Tom, if we do see negative prices, which is extremely like it, likely at this point, how does this complicate things? What does this mean for the average investor? And how could this potentially see even more of a disruption here for the broader market? It probably doesn't mean that much for the average investor. We've actually seen negative prices before in the energy business. We've seen them for megawatts. We've seen it for natural gas in mid-Texas. And we've seen it for propane in Canada you know, after the vortex year. So we've dealt with that. I, I don't think most of us ever thought we were going to deal with negative crude oil prices, certainly not in May of any particular year. And that's delivery here. But I think we're finishing up the first third of the year. Uh, and you might need a fifth to sort of finish the, th the third if you were uh, long in crude oil. Uh, and I don't think people should look at this and say we're going to see much more of the same. Believe it or not, the OPEC Plus meeting did uh, sort of uh, result in a significant agreement. It's not going to help in the second quarter necessarily, but it will help prices recover this summer and then later this year. Well, we do see the prices of recover uh, later this summer and later on this year. What's going to get the price of oil moving to the upside? What do we need to see in the broader market in order for us to see some stabilization here? Uh, you're going to see shut-ins. I mean, you're you're at numbers now, uh, really sort of in the teens and in the uh, you know places like the Bakken and West Texas or whatever. You know, forget about that future sprint for a moment and just look at the distressed numbers elsewhere. That's going to shut in production in places like shale. Uh, almost all the frackers were way, way, way below break even. That's going to shut in production in the oil sands, and it's probably going to shut in production deep water. Uh, you know, after the OPEC Plus meeting, we heard, oh, 9.7 million barrels a day cut, which starts in May, by the way. We heard the president take credit for a 20 million barrels a day cut. We'll probably see a cut almost on the order of 20 million barrels a day, but it won't be the result of the meeting or the cartel. It'll be a result of prices driving uh, oil uh, wells to be shut in. Tom, do you think we'll see an acceleration of bankruptcies in the energy sector because of this? Absolutely. I mean, we're going to see a lot of bankruptcies up among small energy and exploration companies and midstream companies, and particularly those with a high debt load. Uh, I don't think you'll see anything really impact the major oil companies, but they're coming off a terrible decade, you know, a decade that was really not influenced as much by WTI as the notion of ESG, uh, environmental and social governance. So you don't have a lot of investment money flowing into anything fossil fuel related these days. And my suspicion is it's going to be a rough rest of 2020 and uh, even into 2021 as well.
Tom, we had uh, the CEO of Parsley Energy. He was on the show last week just talking about uh, the massive sell-off that we've seen in the price of oil. And again, when I was talking to him at that time, it was still above $10 a barrel, way above $10 a barrel. And he was talking about the fact that he thinks that Texas, the state of Texas, needs to cap production in the state because it's time that the U.S. did something in order to try to buoy the price of oil. Do you think that's a good idea? And how much impact will that have on the broader oil market? Well, I, I do think that the consumer will benefit and the pl planet will actually benefit from higher oil prices. I mean, at these numbers, there is absolutely no incentive to use less fossil fuels or to gravitate to cars that have less than a, of a carbon footprint. Uh, but it's going to take a while. I'm not or I am very much averse to the idea of cartels and sort of price fixing or fixing production. I think it's more Darwinian than that. I think these numbers are the numbers that are going to result in a lot of shut-ins uh, in North America, but around the world, really on every continent that has oil, which is every continent, but Antarctica. Now, what does this mean for geopolitics? I mean, how does this complicate things when we have uh, the price of crude flirting with negative territory? Well, you're talking about uh, a lot of very well-heeled countries that are cer certainly not going to be well-heeled, and it's going to hurt their economies. Any oil-producing country, Canada, even the United States, this is going to hurt. The prices are so low. And, uh, you know, it would be nice if there was some sort of a brand agreement to transition to a lower carbon footprint because of this, but I don't think that's in the cards for this year, at least. Tom, if you were to guess how long uh, oil would be in negative territory for, or really just staying below a dollar a barrel, what would your prediction be at this point? I'd say we might, we'll, we're having a cup of coffee with it right now, where we went negative, and uh, it may occur tomorrow since it's the last day of the contract. But it's a little bit more about the internals of the market and all of the longs that got trapped in paper. Unless they were actually in the business, they could not take delivery of WTI and find a place to store that. We think that there'll be all sorts of innovative ways to store oil that come up. And the middle third of this uh, 2020 will get a little bit more stable. And by the end of the year, global uh, demand will probably be much closer to global production and oil will start to rebalance again. But this is a real, real tough April and May for anyone in the oil supply uh, area, whether it be at the wellhead, the refinery, or even at the pump. Yeah, and Tom, and as we were just talking, we saw uh, the price of oil go negative, falling all the way uh, to negative $1.43 a barrel. So something we will continue to keep an eye on here. Tom Closa, thanks so much for joining us this afternoon. Thanks. Hey investors, Zach Guzman here. Are you interested in learning more about the markets and getting the latest financial news? Well then click right here to subscribe to our Yahoo Finance YouTube channel. Get the latest up to the minute market analysis, big interviews in the world of finance, and information on how to manage your money every day wherever you are.